welcome back guys to a new video and in this one i'm gonna show you how you can get all the aptos transactions now for this specific case i think i've limited it to 20 or probably 50 because it's too many but you can easily change this number to 10 uh, 35 99 or whatever you want to and this is also the endpoint i used in the previous blueprints video about aptos explorer so this comes very handy when you want to build bigger dApps where you capture all the transactions and when I reload this page, you can see in just a few seconds, I get the latest transactions, uh, the version, uh, the timestamp, the sender and the send to the receiver, so to say, and then the function. So this was a new block event. This was a con register event. And then we have multiple others that we can see if I reload one more time, we can see them like so withdrawal event. And we can see the value along with the gas price for that specific transaction. Now that's pretty cool in my opinion. Let me show you how to build this in just a few minutes. Hey, I'm Joseph, your Web3 instructor from Sweden. I've been into crypto since 2017 and have been building in the space since 2021. In my free time, I enjoy playing paddle, going to the gym or hanging out with my dog. I always try to enjoy some good pancakes, but that's for another time. Now let's get back to the video. All right, let's get started. And you're gonna be amazed about how quickly we can build this dApp, how quickly we can get all this data. So let's go on and create a root folder, the get aptos transactions. And then as always, we're gonna have a front end and a back end folder. And we're starting with back end. We're gonna install node fetch express.env and course, and then make sure you also add this start script right here. And then we're gonna need to add our Morales API key inside the .env file. And if you don't have an API key already, that means you don't have a Morales account. So go to morales.io. If you're not sure about the different plans we have, go to pricing and you can check them out right here. So we have this starter plan, which is for free and it's good for getting started. It will help you out to just uh, touch the water, so to say. But if you're serious about building within the Web3 space, I definitely recommend you to go with the pro plan, which is only for $49 a month. The difference between the pro plan and the starter plan is very big. You have 60 compute units per second. Uh, you have unlimited daily, and then you never have to refresh your API key. But with the starter plan, you actually have to do that every three days. So make sure you go with the pro plan. Once you've done that, log in to that account. And inside your admin dashboard, you're gonna go to Web3 APIs and copy your API key from here and paste that in inside the EMV file. All right, that means we can actually use it inside the index.js file. And we're gonna use process.env to get it like so from the .env file. And then we're gonna store it inside this variable. But I will come back to this in just a few seconds. First, let's import all the dependencies we're going to use. And then we're gonna set up our backend server on the port of 5001. Then once we have this uh, API key from the .env file, we can use it inside this options object right here. And this options object is gonna be the second parameter when we do our fetch request down here. And we only have one single endpoint on this backend server. And that's all we need. We're going to have this get request on slash get transactions. And once you go to this endpoint, our backend server will do a request to this endpoint that Morales provides us. And here you can see I've limited this to 50. I could easily change this to, let's say, 73. But what's even better, you could have a drop down or an input field on the front end client and have the user choose the limit themselves. And then this will be more dynamic. And once we get the response back, we're sending that to the front end client and there we will do all the magic. So let's jump into this front end folder, which is a Next.js application. And we're also installing Axios to do the request to our backend server. And it's going to be a pretty clean application. If we check index.js, we only render these two components and the header is basically containing the logo and the title only so everything is happening within this main.js which is a single file guys that's not too many lines of code that's not a bunch of files it's one single file that makes all of this happen 
So we're gonna import Axios because we're gonna need to use that. We're gonna declare these two state variables and it's gonna be an empty array and a boolean set to false to begin with. And we're gonna use use effect. So at the moment we render this page, we're gonna do an access request to our backend server on slash get transactions. And once we get the response back from the backend client or backend server, we're gonna store the response.data array inside the set result and then we're gonna set show result to true and what that means is we have a section that's not gonna be rendered until this uh, show results is true so before that we only render this table header which are these right here if you remember this header right here and once the show result is true we're gonna render all of this data and that contains uh, a table row that's gonna have each and every table data right here so well, how do we do that we render through this result array or we map through it i'm sorry we map through result array and for each and every item in there we're gonna check do we have a transaction event and does the first index there have a type and if it does then we're gonna return this table row where we render the transaction uh, version we're gonna have the SVG, which is these arrows right here. And then we're gonna have the timestamp right here, which we need to format a little bit to get it in the right format as we want to display it. Then we have this right here, which is the account address. And we're gonna slice it because we don't want to display all the characters of this wallet address. We just want to display the first few ones. And then here we have the receiver and we're doing the same thing. Next up, is the function and then we have the amount along with the gas so let's go on with the function and you can see that we can get it from here inside type and then we're gonna render uh, this type but we're gonna split it slice it and then join it because when we get it back from the backend server it looks a little bit weird so to say for uh, something to be rendered inside the UI and it should it would be very long like three times this length but we don't want to display that because that's not a good UI experience. Instead, let's have it like this, which explains exactly what this function is doing. And lastly, we have the amount along with the gas price. So we can easily get the data amount like this. And then we're going to add four decimals to it and add this apt text at the end. And then the second value is the gas, which we're going to get like this. We're going to add eight decimals and we're gonna format it like so so we can display it the way we want to and that's all we need guys we don't need more code than this we don't need more files than this we don't need a bunch of apis a bunch of endpoints we only need morales one single endpoint and one front-end client that renders all this data and once i reload this page you can see we have the newly fresh transactions on the aptos blockchain displaying on our front-end client i hope you enjoyed this quick little video guys if you did make sure you smash the like button let me know in the comment section below what you thought about this video and i will see you in the next one